Ayakui, everybody. Net Canal Skip Lowry. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm here at Sumac Village, Patrick's Point State Park. I am an interpreter for the North Coast Redwoods District. It's a really nice day here. I'm happy to be here with you guys. Today I'm going to give you guys a short overview um, regarding indigenous technologies and to share some of our technologies, I, I must say that state that mainstream education often purposefully oppresses the fact that native people were highly civilized, um, highly sophisticated, uh, their communities had very complex government systems, and they had technology. And they had some of state of the art technology, sustainable, organic. Um, technology that exists today it's not in the history book still it wasn't annihilated like they tried to actively erase us so today I'm going to share a little bit about the canoe I have two helpers with me today my sons are with me so they're actually running the camera they're they're behind the scenes um, if you can hear me well I'm gonna speak really loud because I'm gonna get farther away from the camera so if I'm yelling at you I'm sorry but I'm really trying to project my voice to the camera um, so the Yurok canoe is one piece of Yurok technology that has a lot of sophisticated engineering and design and concept and spiritual um, meanings. So I'm going to briefly just touch on the fact that the Yurok canoe, if you date canoes historically, the Yurok canoe is one of the most high-tech and advanced canoes ever built. So you can go 10,000 years back and the canoes were made like this. In no other culture in the world are there the sophisticated measures that Yurok people instilled in their boats, Yurok men specifically, men made boats, is their responsibility, their duty. Um, these are tried and true against almost all boat faring people on the globe 10,000 years ago. This was the most advanced canoe on the globe. That's what I've been, I've uh, done some research on it. Um, our Yurok people have been studied more than any other tribe uh, in America. And so there are a lot of scholars that, uh, and there are archives like in places, Berkeley, California, the big college down there, that have this information um, in their archives. So what, when you look at this canoe here, I want to show you a couple main things. So one, it's about 17 feet long, weighs about 1,300 pounds out of the water, so it takes multiple men to either scoot it in and out of the water. Yurok people always believe their boats are supposed to stay in the water once they're made and created, and you never flip it upside down. If it gets water in it, it's okay. You just got to bail it out. Um, but you never flip it upside down in our culture. And there's reasons for that I'm not going to share today. What I want to show you is that the Europe people believe the, the, the canoe, the redwood tree, which this dugout canoe is made out of, is the heart of our people. There's creation stories that tie us intimately to it. We believe that the spirit of the redwood tree, which is a protecting healing spirit, resonates out of the wood even after it's fallen it has uh, a soul um has a energy and so when a man would make a canoe you put his energy into it and you give it a lot of respect now one thing about these canoes come close and look right here this this is the seat for one the seat where the the, the pilot would sit maybe the owner of the boat would sit the person with the most experience of the water would sit these look like just footrests to sit, you'd sit there and put your feet here, but they're actually physical representations of human kidneys. So Yurok people understood that we had kidneys um, and they understood what kidneys did. They purify your blood. And so they made this physical representation of human needs and they gave it to this redwood log in the form of a this redwood entity in the form of a canoe. 
So we want our canoe to be balanced and pure and clean when we have our families in it. So there's a spiritual aspect of saying when you're going to put your baby or your elders or your money or some medicine, your family, your friends in a canoe, water can be dangerous and treacherous. You want a really clean, pure canoe to be carrying around your precious family. So we gave this canoe has the technology spiritual to be a clean pure canoe if we move forward here to the front of the canoe we also give the canoe a physical representation of a human heart a lot of people think this is a seat um, but it's a heart the heart of the redwood tree that has now become a dugout canoe and so we as a human have a heart and we need that heart to exist and once it stops we're gone so you're not people always gave their canoe a heart so it was a living breathing uh physical part of our community make sure you don't just if you can see can you see me too you want to get kind of not just there but frame it so that you can kind of see me as well even though the most important thing to focus on is the canoe right now but I'm helping my son work on framing pictures uh, as a videographer right now. As, as we do this work, it's about teaching the youth to carry on the traditions um, in the face of oppression, uh, in the face of um, genocide and white supremacy. Uh, Native people um, succeeded in surviving that oppression and that evil and that hatred. And we are here now sharing it with you today. And uh, my kids are going to be able to share it in the future for, for, for the future. Another thing that a technology that, uh, that's in here is these two crescent shapes signify the lungs of a human. So we as people need to breathe air, oxygen. We put that same respect into the tree. Um, it breathes, it needs to stay above the water um, because it has lungs. We don't want this boat to sink when we have our family in it, right? In the water. Dangerous. So this boat actually has the need to stay above the water because it has lungs. It wants to stay above the water because it has to breathe air. Uh, so it has a will, a desire, and a purpose spiritually and physically bound to it and the community. Um, each canoe has like a cheek line and a nose so they're very personal they have their own face you never ever ever pick up a Yurok canoe by its nose because none of us would want to be picked up by our noses would we so this is the fragile part of the canoe if I look at my hands right here this little lip along the whole edge down both sides is where you would lift a Yurok canoe from and if you come to our parks and visit please don't try to lift up our canoes they're fragile um, they take master engineers to design and build and construct and there's not a lot of Yurok master builders uh, available to just be busting out canoes left and right when, if people uh, don't take care of the parks that are taking care of uh, uh, the canoes and our and in relationship with our culture you know the state park doesn't take care of our culture it's in relationship with our culture so this place has been here our people have been here since time immemorial and so the state park is a newcomer. It's an Euro immigrant um, structure that came from Western cultures. And so uh, they are new to here and we have been here. And so they're in relationship with us now. And it's a time of healing. Uh, I have to say that again, um, California state parks does have a, a track record of oppression and the genocide of Native American people California and right now our district I'm so proud to be a part of it and honored to be a part of it uh, we are developing cutting-edge first-time uh, healing opportunities and relationship building processes and it's making a difference in the world and in our communities both native and non so one more thing about the canoe this canoe is actually if you want to pan down the canoe one more time and imagine you guys at home, you see some puddle of water in there, and unfortunately there's a hole, and this canoe is not boat worthy or ocean worthy. 
or lagoon worthy, it's got a hole. But if it didn't have that hole and you filled up this whole canoe with water, it would still float at the top and it would still float right side up. So that's sophisticated technology. There aren't canoe, Coleman has nothing on your design of canoes. You step, you can stand in these carefully. You can walk back and forth in these carefully if they're engineered right. We actually have what's called boat dances where we line up dancers in here and we dance while we're traveling across certain places of water. So they are structurally and engineered soundly and uh, very, very um, high tech engineering goes into this, the process of creating a canoe. Uh, a long time ago, when we didn't have chainsaws and axes, blades and stuff, they'd use elk horn antlers as their primary chiseling tool, adds blades, but fire, they'd hit it with fire first and then they'd dig out the fire. So it was a dug out canoe and I've heard it would take approximately seven years, up to seven years to make a canoe like this because you'd have to go out and get the log down to the right size using fire and elk horn. <laughs> That's your main means of cutting it to length, getting the ex excess off. You can imagine this is an old growth redwood that was, you know, a thousand years old, maybe, maybe more. Um, when those trees go down, they're big. And to get it down to this size takes a lot of work, a lot of time a lot of sophisticated understanding of resources and technology um, to make the proper Yurok canoe. Uh, Yurok canoes were found all up and down the Klamath River. They were actually sought after uh, pre-contact. Um, Yurok men, boat makers, were known to be the best boat makers on the rivers and so Yurok canoes were sought after and they were very very valuable they were worth a lot of um like indigenous wealth when we talk about wealth we have a different concept of it but um we do cherish how much energy and time goes into this what it resembles what it came from the redwood the key so uh I've been going a little while. I don't know. I'm not looking at the screen, so I don't see I don't see the comments. But uh, I'd love to look at those comments. I do every time. I don't really respond to them often. I'm sorry. Uh, it takes a lot to kind of even just share this type of um, pride in in my community, my culture, uh, knowing how hard it was for them to keep their culture alive and through the past 200 years of Euro immigration and um, Western ideology um, affecting the relationships between people and place. So I'm going to end there. Again, your rock canoe is uh, technically unsinkable. I mean, if it breaks, it breaks and then it'll go down, but you can fill it up with water and it'll still float. Um, the first time I was ever on the Yurok, uh, the Eureka Bay here in Weok country was in a redwood canoe when the city of Eureka returned acreage back to the Weok people, their sacred island, their sacred site. First time in I think the history of the nation, a city, county gave sacred indigenous land back to the original people of the place. So um, I was honored to be in the boat and in that, in that uh, repatriation of indigenous land of the Weok people. Um, first time I was in the ocean, I was in Trinidad Bay, was in a Yurok canoe. And I've actually never been on the ocean again in any other boat, so uh, well, I'm honored to say I've been on Eureka Bay and on the ocean in Yurok canoes. First time I was on Big Lagoon, was in a Yurok canoe. First time I was in Stone Lagoon, I was in a Coleman canoe. So I know the difference of canoes, and I'll tell you what, these Yurok canoes, the Coleman doesn't have anything on them. Uh, they are super sophisticated technology that dates back 10,000 years and is going to continue on to the future. Um, hopefully, for all time, humans can be sustainable with Mother Earth and heal our relationship with the places and get back on track to uh, world renewal peoples um, for everybody, not just our cultures, but everybody should be thinking about world renewals strategies and 
actions that we can take as humans to lessen our impacts with our place and maybe even like fire you know fire used to um, make the place stronger uh, when they suppress that and they remove the people from the place that technology that was used to keep nature healthy was also removed with the people so the place became less healthy and our taxpayers money right now you're out taxpayers money is paying for um, the destruction of the removal of our um, sophisticated natural resource management systems strategies techniques and technologies so that wasn't so quick but i'm going to end now <laughs> i appreciate again everybody that checks in um, on all of our facebook lives three o'clock every day north coast redwood district we have a great interpretive team that i'm proud to be a part of Ugh, i'm gonna stand up ah so check those out three o'clock and i'll hopefully see you guys and check you guys out next sunday Thank you, my sons, my two boys, for helping me out today. I really appreciate you guys. Bye.